In this tutorial, we'll be demonstrating the texture toolpath strategy in combination with a pre-created set of vectors. This is to create an even more dynamic texture pattern to that created with the standard profile toolpath. These vectors were created using the 2D vector texture tool, as explained in the related vector drawing tutorial, which can be found in the related videos section on this page. And we're going to start now by closing down this file and opening up the file containing the pre-created vectors. So we're going to want to open an existing file and we're going to choose the vector textures vectordrawing.crv and then we'll be presented with the patterns that we created in the previous vector drawing tutorial. So first of all if we take a look at the layer drop down in the layer menu you'll see that there's five layers. We've got cutout which is the rectangular vector you see on the screen for the profile cutout so we can switch that off for now. And we'll just work down by switching off the visibility of wave, which you can see on the screen. And then we'll switch on step, which is similar to wave, but it steps up diagonally across the page. And then we have the swirl pattern, which is a more of a randomized variable offset between the vectors. And then finally, we've got the wood grain effect, which we can use to create a faux wood grain texture. Okay, so we're going to start with the wave pattern. So I'll switch that back on, switch wood grain off and make sure that wave is the active layer and I'm going to switch back over to the toolpath panel because we're going to start looking at the machining parameters. So we'll start by setting up the material. So in this case, we're going to keep the thickness at 0.75. Our XY dating position will be in the lower left hand corner. We'll be zero in from the material surface. And again, we'll just check over our rapid and home positions just to make sure that they're safe and appropriate for our machine. Now the strategy that we're going to be using for this tutorial is the texturing toolpath and that can be found on the second line of the toolpath operations. And when we open into this form we're faced with a number of different variables including the ability to create a textured toolpath without needing any vectors. And we actually use this in the rocket nameplate 2D toolpath tutorial where we used the texture toolpath to create a scalloped effect in the pocketed region. But in this case, we're actually working from a pre-created set of vectors. So at the top of this form, you'll see you selected vectors as pattern. So we're going to want to select that in this case. And you'll see when you do that, the variables that are not needed after that are grayed out. But before we get onto those, we just need to select a tool. So I'll click on select. And in this case, I'm going to be using a half an inch ball nose. And then we'll move down to the start depth. So this is the depth at which the texture toolpaths are going to start from. And in this case, because we're starting from the material surface, we can leave it at zero. But you'll see later on in the tutorial that we might need to alter that to get the effect we're after. And then we can come down to the only variable that we need to set here, which is the maximum cutting depth. So with this tool, we're essentially varying the cutting depth of the profile. So at the moment, we've got the maximum cut depth of 0.15 and the minimum cut depth of 0.08. So I'm going to change these around and first of all, I'm just going to change that down to 0.15 to match the maximum cut depth. So our maximum cut depth is 1.5 and our minimum cut depth is 0.15. So that should cut uniformly down to a depth of 0.15. So I'm going to come down and just name that wave. And with all the vectors selected, I'm just going to click calculate. And then we can go ahead and preview that. And you'll see that the profile that's created is just like a standard profile toolpath with no variation in the cutting depth. Now what sets this toolpath strategy apart from the others is the ability to actually vary that cut depth. So instead of setting them both the same, I'm just going to put the minimum depth to as shallow as it will go at 0 0.0079 inches. And we'll just recalculate that. And then we can undo last and preview. And now that's played through, you'll see quite a significant change in the pattern. It's a much better, more dynamic texture where you can see a lot of variation in the height. But you will see that in some areas it's very shallow because we've got the shallowest minimum cut depth that it would allow us to select. So areas like this, the tools barely going into the material. So say we're happy with this pattern, but we just wanted it to cut a little bit deeper. Uh, then we could come back into the toolpath and instead of 
changing the max and minimum cutting depths around, we can then look to use the start depth. So at the moment it's set to the material surface at zero, so minimum depth could be 0 0.007 inches below that, in which case we might not get adjacent profiles overlapping each other properly. So in this case, see if we can just rectify this, I'm just going to increase the start depth by 0 0.05 of an inch, and I'm also going to increase the maximum cutting depth up to 0.2 inches. And we'll just click calculate again. So what we've effectively done here now is lowered the texture down by 50 thousandths of an inch. So we'll just undo that last one and preview visible. And if we take a look at that now, you can see that there's much greater variation in the depth, sir. so it's more apparent if we look at the edges. And we can see all down this side. So we've got the minimum cutting depth of around 0 0.06 all the way down to 0.26. But with that done, we're now going to move away from the wave pattern and take a look at the swell. So we're going to go back into our 2D view, come back up to the layers tab, and we're going to switch off the wave layer and instead switch on the swell layer. And then we're going to come back in and take a look at the same toolpath using this more random pattern, which was created with the vector texture tool. So working through the form again, I'm going to use the same tool, the half inch ball nose. I'm going to reset the start depth back to the material surface at zero. And we're going to lower the maximum cut depth from 0.2 to 0.1 inches. So because we're going to use the vectors instead of doing it free form, we'll check use selected vectors and select the pattern. And I'm going to come down and we'll call this one swirl. And press calculate. So now we can see the toolpath in the 3D view, we can reset the preview and just simulate that by preview invisible toolpath. And as you can see, that's created a very nice dynamic pattern with a lot of movement in it. But what we can do now is just have a look to see how much of an effect the texture settings have in here. So we'll go back into the toolpath and we'll match the minimum cutting depth with the maximum so that it's given us a consistent depth like a standard profile toolpath. So we'll recalculate that, undo the last preview, and then we'll preview that again. And you'll see that with that, we're losing a lot of the depth that the pattern had previously, and it's looking a bit washed out really. So we'll go back into the toolpath, and we'll put the minimum cutting depth back to where it was at 0 0.005 inches. Recalculate that, reset the preview, and preview visible toolpaths again, and you'll see the dramatic effect that the texture settings have here. But there are areas for improvement, so we can see some almost flat spots here. Uh, so we can come back into the toolpath, and we'll just increase the start depth this time by maybe 50 thou, and we'll increase the cut depth by 50 thou as well. And we'll just recalculate that, reset the preview and preview visible. And now we're going to get an even bigger dynamic effect. So that just shows the amount of tools at our disposal to be able to vary the cut and create a wide variety of patterns. But it should be noted that if I go back into the toolpath without changing any parameters at all, if I just click calculate again, it will lead to a completely different pattern. So you'll see some areas have been machined over here. And if we just play that over the top, you will see that some of these areas have been machined away. And the reason for that is because the recalculated toolpath has different cutting depths as they're being varied on a case by case basis. Okay, so another thing that we can look to do here is to use a different tool to see if that changes the pattern at all. So I'm gonna go back into the toolpath and I'm going to come back up to the top where I've selected ball nose half inch. And from the tool database, I'm instead going to pick a V-bit 90 degree, and I'll click select to accept that. And coming down to the start depth, I'm going to reset that back to zero from the material surface. We'll take off the additional cutting depth that we added, and we can calculate that now, and just reset the preview, and press play on that one. And you can see now that in particular with the V-bit tool, you really get an understanding of the varied cut depths. So you can see some areas where the tool looks like it's just dipping in by the minimum five thou and other areas where it's going to the full cut depth.
And of course, given the nature of the tool with its point, you'll see significant areas of flat spots where the tool's barely dipping in at all. So over here and areas like this. And this is one situation where changing the start depth and max cut depth makes a big difference. So we can go back in and increase these by 0.05 of an inch in both cases and click calculate. And again, I'm just going to reset the preview and press play on that. And you'll see now that we really do get a fantastic effect from that. So this is the swirl pattern using the V-bit tool along with the textured tool path. And you'll see now that that just gives you an incredible textured pattern. Okay, so now we can move on and take a look at the wood grain effect. So I'm just going to close out the preview and come back over to the 3D view. Um, we're just going to switch off the swirl pattern this time and switch on the wood grain. And we'll just click that again just to make sure that it's our active layer. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to select the vectors and come back into the textured toolpath. And instead of using the V bit this time, we're going to look to use a quarter inch ball nose. So we'll select that in the tool database. And once again, we'll just put the start depth back to zero and the max cut depth back to 0.1. And just to test this, we'll set the minimum depth so that we just simulate a profile toolpath. Almost forgot to select, use selective vectors. So make sure we've got that selected and then we can come down and we'll call this wood grain and then we'll click calculate. And now you can see the toolpath in the 3D view. Just going to preview that. So as you can see, it is giving off the look of wood grain slightly. So it's doing what we wanted but we just haven't got enough depth variation to define the toolpaths. So with this, I'm going to come back into the toolpath and we're going to look to decrease the minimum depth from one down to just five thousandths of an inch. And we're going to recalculate that and we'll just reset the preview and play again. And we'll see that we're getting a massively different effect by just a small change in the form. So we can have a look over this in the 3D view. And if we look at the ends, we can see the variation in depths. So that is looking really close to wood grain there. And we can look into using different tools with this one as well. So we'll go back into the tool path. Instead this time uh, to see what that would be like with the V-bit tool. So once again, we'll use the 90 degree V-bit. I'll leave the start and cut depths as they are for now actually. And we'll just go ahead and we can just calculate that. Undo last and preview. And really, if we look at that now, we don't really need to change our start and maximum cut depths because we're still getting a pretty accurate wood grain effect because the vectors are so close together. But if we look at the edges, we can still see that we're getting some flat spots here. So you might want to alter these. So we can go back in and again, just altering it by 0.05 of an inch or the max cutting depth, recalculate and preview. And we'll see that we get a much deeper effect from that with ridges as opposed to flat spots. Looking at that straight down, it might be a little bit too deep, but we're still getting a really nice wood grain effect off this. Okay, so we've covered the different parameters of the texture toolpath and this next part is really just about the profile pass around the outside to trim these panels down. And to do this, I want to be using the wave pattern as the reference. So just undo the last on the preview and simulate the wave instead. And I want to tile my windows horizontally uh, so I can see the 2D view and I just need to switch over to the wave layer so that's visible instead. And now we've got that visible in both the 2D and the 3D view, uh, we can switch on the cutout layer again which we switched off at the beginning and that contains the rectangular vector that we're going to base our profile pass on. So I'll just come in and select that vector and what we're looking to do here really is just trim away these outside edges of the panel. So we look at the sides due to the nature of the V bit, uh, it's leaving these ridges, which we want to just cut away. So we've got smooth transitions between the panels, but we do just need to be aware that because we were using the texturing tool path, 
we won't be able to lay these in X and Y as a seamless pattern. And so it's only going to work horizontally, so on end on end, and it won't match up if we try and place the panels top and bottom. But we'll just apply our profile pass and see what we get. So I'll just close out of the preview. And this time I'm going to want to use the profile toolpath with that rectangular vector selected. I want the cut depth to be the full material thickness, which if I didn't know, I could just enter Z equals on the keyboard. The tool I'm going to use is a quarter inch M mil. So I'll just select that. Uh, we're going to be machining outside of the vectors. And we don't need to worry about the rest of the form, so I'm just going to come down and we're going to name this cutout and click calculate. Okay, so we can see the toolpath in the 3D view, so I'm just going to zoom in and we'll just simulate that. And we can see that the panel is no longer attached to the waste material, so we can actually double click on that in the preview to remove it. And now we can see the really nice smooth edge to this panel that we've got now. And that's why we initially made the panel larger than we required so that we could then trim it back and get this perfect edge. Okay, so what we've seen here is the use of the texturing toolpath in combination with the vectors created in the 2D drawing video to create a really nice textured panel effect. And this is on top of the previous video where we looked at just the 2D toolpaths. So that was purely just using the profile toolpath along with changing the tools and the depths to get the effect. What we've shown in this 2.5D toolpath in video is that we can use the texture toolpath to vary the heights of the adjacent passes to create an even more dynamic and interesting effect. So at this point now, you can go ahead and save your toolpaths to output to your CNC machine. To learn how to do this, please refer to the dedicated toolpath saving guide tutorial that you can find in the related video section for this tutorial.